Now, let us understand the primary human metabolism. Metabolism refers to the full range of chemical changes occurring in living cells, including the processes whereby the body obtains and uses energy and nutrients from food. All foods we consume can be classified into two types of nutrients, macronutrients and micronutrients. Micronutrients are vitamins and minerals required by the body and these substances are typically needed in much smaller amounts than macronutrients. In contrast to macronutrients, micronutrients do not provide energy but they are often required for metabolic processes related to macronutrient absorption and use. Let us limit our scope to understand the role of those nutrients that provide energy. The macronutrients are carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. Macronutrients are typically highly bioavailable. In other words, a large proportion of the nutrient is absorbed during digestion. This means that macronutrients are required in far larger quantities than micronutrients. Please keep that in mind. The most important type of macronutrient that we need to discuss is carbohydrates because type 2 diabetes and obesity are caused by consuming excess carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are nothing but starches and sugars. These sugars are available in three different forms, glucose, sucrose, and fructose. Sucrose is nothing but 50% glucose and 50% fructose. So all we have is glucose and fructose. Fructose is found mostly in fruits. Our bodies process both these forms of sugars in two different ways. Glucose directly goes into the bloodstream and our cells consume glucose in its direct form. The cells use this glucose and convert it into the energy our bodies need to function efficiently. This process of converting glucose into energy by the cells is called metabolism. I'm sure all of us learned what metabolism is in our science classes back in school. Hence, glucose is the main source of fuel for our cells. The excess and unused glucose that has not been metabolized is transported into the liver and our muscles. The liver and our muscles then process this excess glucose and convert it into glycogen with the help of a hormone called glucagon produced by pancreas's alpha cells. Please remember that insulin is a hormone produced by pancreas's beta cells. Anyway, glycogen is nothing but many connected glucose molecules. In short, think of this as a short-term storage mechanism of the human body. Our muscles and our cells deal with 80% of the ingested glucose, leaving only 20% of it to be processed by the liver. This takes a huge burden away from the liver. After this, the body utilizes this glycogen whenever it needs it, breaks it down into glucose and fuels our cells continuously even when we are not eating. Therefore, a healthy human body is continuously energized during the day and recuperates at night. This is the story of glucose. However, the human body processes fructose in a completely different way. This is because our cells cannot consume fructose as fuel in its direct form. Fructose must be broken down and converted into glucose for our body to utilize it. This work can be done only by the liver. Hence, fructose targets the liver like a guided missile, putting a lot of burden on the liver. The liver processes this fructose and converts it into glycogen, which can in turn be broken down into glucose that the body can use. The same is the case with ethanol, 
that is alcohol. Once ingested, our tissues can only metabolize 20% of alcohol, leaving 80% targeted straight to the liver. Hence, avoiding alcohol completely or just having it in moderation is advised. So this is the story of sugars and the mechanism of metabolism of the human body in brief. Now, it will all be good if we consume everything moderately, but the problem occurs with the dosage. Hence, this famous proverb indicates the basic principle of toxicology. The dose makes the poison. Our bodies are designed to tolerate a little high dose of glucose and fructose because when the liver storage gets full, that is when it can no longer store any excess glycogen, it has a great function called DNL or de novo lipogenesis. DNL is the process by which the liver converts these excess sugars into triglycerides, which are one of the types of lipids and pushes it into the body fat or the visceral fat that is the fat stored deep inside the belly, wrapped around the organs, including the liver and intestines. This is the body's way of storing for long-term use. Please remember this function, DNL. We will refer to this in the next section to understand what causes the disease, diabetes.